Welcome to uh, welcome to Kaiser Traffic Safety uh, Bikeways and Pedestrian Committee, and uh, we have a, a quorum, and uh, we don't have any visitors today, uh, no interested parties from the community. So we're going to call a meeting to order at six o'clock. Um, I'm going to jump right down to item number four, uh, Parkway Bike. Oh yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for keeping me honest. Uh, have y'all had a chance to review the minutes from last month? Okay. All I in move, favor? Of I move that we accept the minutes from whatever October 2018 okay. as written. As written. With I my name corrected. <laughs> <laughs> I second that. Okay. Now, all in favor of of approving the minutes from last month? Say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The minutes are approved. I wasn't here, so I abstained. Okay. okay. Michael is going to abstain from that one. Now let's jump down to number four on the agenda. Parkway bike path signage. Uh, Pat, Hirsch, you guys have anything new on that? I have nothing. We, we didn't meet on site with city staff as we had hoped to or planned to. But uh, yeah, the only thing I've done on this so far is I, I have made a couple of phone calls to the on the ODOT side, so I'm waiting to um, get um, in contact with them. And that's what I was wondering if you had made any contact with ODOT as far as whether or not um, it's fine to place the signage within the right of way, or just just how they feel about that. So. Right, because I had talked to Dorothy Upton, the Region Two traffic engineer, and I looked at that, and it was. I think maybe March of 2017, so over a year and a half. So I just left her a message that I want to make sure that the pro what you know is the process still the same as what it would be, and if there anything is there anything new that we would need to know. So I'll try to get hold of her. And I had done some research um, for the nine signs and a cost estimate back then. So when it comes okay. to that time, we'll figure out how well, how to proceed from there. Yes. So. Okay, and once again, the purpose of these signs is to... Uh, well, the purpose of the signs uh, w on the um, on the parkway uh, bike path currently, there are signs as you're proceeding north or south that tell you how far it is to, to some destinations. But the purpose was to, at each of the uh, access points along the path, to tell people what, point, what key destinations are in Kaiser. So it would tell them what they're going to get to if they exit at that point and also uh, we were hoping signs that as people enter the path on that side at those locations like uh, is it pl um, Pleasant, View Pleasant View and Brook Brooks, yeah, Brooks Brooks and Kaiser Road it and would so be identifying uh, um, like uh, Miller Park yeah. How to access Miller Park from there. Yeah, or City Hall and, and, City Hall and different and things. And then if you Clagan. came onto the path in those places, then you would have signs that would tell you how far it is north and south to, say, Kaiser Station or Little League Fields or things like that. Okay, thank you. And so the uh, have we already defined the wording of the signs? We have some proposed wording for the signs. Hirsch and I uh, did that previously, yes. And do we know the size of the sign? And then Mike took our list and uh, estimated some prices for fabrication of the sign, the, 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 uh, actually the, the sign plates and posts, I think. And there's two sizes. There's a smaller and a larger. So, <laughs> and the estimate I went with the larger just to get the high end of the dollar amount for the signs. But um, we can probably get an example of one and look at it and decide which route we want to go from there. So. And again, again, there are some that ODOT put up in the very beginning of the bikeway, um, indicating Kaiser Station, but not other, you know, like the parks. And there's two parks right along that way that, uh, that we could identify, and as well as the baseball fields and mm -hmm. things like that. And even the uh, Kaiser um, Transit St Center. Exactly, that'd be a good one, yeah. Uh, some time ago, I contacted the city of Salem. If you're familiar with downtown 
Salem, they're pedestrian signs, the big ones that have a map, little big yeah. ones like that. They're really expensive. <laughs> yeah. First off, and they wouldn't, I, I tried to get an idea of how much they cost, but the first thing is, well, you have to talk to the engineer. You have to talk, to the, and then you have to talk to the guy who creates the sign, then the guy who makes the sign, and it goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. They weren't. Yeah, yeah these, these wouldn't be the, de not the ones, detail, the walking level, like right. uh, tourism signs like that, but pr but just the white writing on green signs that like what's yeah. there already. But these were great signs for places like, yeah. Oh, down on Chamawa, the stocks. What's the uh, Windsor Island Road, mm -hmm. Chamawa, and then the one that right at Cherry, yeah. Cherry, and uh, is that Mamburn? Mamburn, yeah. Like where you have junctions, there's room for signs. There's a lot of thing, a lot of stuff nearby. But, but that would be they just really mm -hmm. expensive. <laughs> I don't know who paid for theirs. I guess it was. If my understand, if my memory stands, that was part of a grant that the Sa city of Salem obtained through some of the uh, um, hotel tax yeah. that thing for downtown, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't direct tax dollars per se, or general fund money. <coughs> okay. Any idea when signs might be installed? Like once they're approved and we got a ways to figure all that out. So uh, <laughs> once we get the ball rolling, uh, it won't take long. But um, we're we're working towards getting there. Okay. Very we good. might have to um, talk to the budget committee this May June to get it in there. Or we're talking around six hundred dollars. I could sell one of my bikes and pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Time to clean out the corral. Yeah, I've been culling the herd here for a while. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you. <laughs> Do you have a question? Uh, I had a question. It, it's about the parkway in general. Um, is, is there a joint city group that talks about access plans and for biking? and Because and, and I, I can think of certain spots that would be helpful, uh, at least if you're going, uh, what would that be, well, towards I-5 um, from the Salem side to get over to Kaiser, uh, or is that just something you go to ODOT and present to them? Or um, access points from Kaiser Streets onto the, onto no, the pathway? Actually, uh, no, well, it's more of uh, a, basically a pathway not far from um, Del Webb to get to that frontage street that's uh, on the south side of you mean Ridge Drive. Oh, that one. No, I think you're talking farther. Fur uh, where are you talking? No, where? Oh, okay, Del Webb. It's by. So if you're going past uh, uh, towards I-5 on the Parkway, it's past the um, Cherry Street. That's the end of the. Yeah. That's the right, end. So of now the you're heading towards. Well, that's the end of the Parkway Trail. That cherry is not right, it is, but I'm saying <coughs> is it the next one down. Okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, the um, city boundaries are right through there, too. You know, the state office building there, yeah, yes, yeah, it is. That's, that's still that Salem, still Salem yeah. okay. So, this would all still so if there was any partnership, it would be oh. Salem Kaiser and ODOT. So that'd be something. As a, would that be something that the city of Kaiser could pr present, or would we have to get Salem on board first for that program? Well, I mean, yeah. okay. But you are talking about the same side where the where the path already exists, right? No, I'm talking on the other side. That would help people who, as they want to go north from Salem, to get. Oh. To go into Kaiser, I think that I is. Guess I think east. that is in Salem on that side. <coughs> so, but it would help people <coughs> to going to Kaiser from Salem. Would that help access to uh, the the Croc Center? Uh, uh, I, it, it could, I guess, because you could then you could come down the path and get over onto that side. But 
it wouldn't well, you cro- very you'd much. cross the parkway there. Well, I'm thinking it would you'd get it would get you to uh, Hawthorne Verda to get mm-hmm. if you wanted to get to that end of the parkway mm. faster on your bike instead of crossing over. It's just an idea. Something I've noticed as I've biked around. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Michael. So you're, just so I understand, your question is, are there any signs from the north directing people to Kaiser? No, not about the signs. It's just I was curious, since we were talking about the parkway, if how, how ideas get presented, since it's two, two city jurisdictions and the ODOT, if it has to be a joint city present presentation to ODOT, or if a one city can present a suggestion. Okay. I, mean, I think, I think that if you're talking about that part on the, which is actually sort of the south or southeast side of the yeah. parkway, mm-hmm. a connection <coughs> through the Salem Street into that frontage where the recycling mm. place is, yeah. um, then you would be on a street and it would go up to Verda and then you could get on the parkway there. Mm-hmm. So that would just, uh, I don't think that would involve Kaiser at any point. No, but I, I was just thinking yeah. it would be a b- for people who want to go to Kaiser or yeah. even from Kaiser to Salem for work or something. It would be, mm-hmm. especially from the Verda side of town, quicker to, and s- might be safer. Like mm-hmm. not having to cross over and cross back. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But, sorry, it was a tangent. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Good tangent. Thank you for, uh, for your thoughts and thinking about it. Any other discussion regarding the, uh, the signage on the, the Salem Parkway? Okay, so we'll move forward on trying to get um, size and place and time. <laughs> Let's move to item number five, committee member input. Uh, David, you have anything new? Uh, we ordered the bike helmets last month. They're, they came in. They really delivered quick, Wait, like no. three days or something. It shows up. And that's from Tacoma. Yeah. Well, they call phone, they fax it in, and it's, it's here. Anyway, they've been picked up and they're stored in, for those of you who don't know, they're in the pump house, which is right next door. What street's that? Rickland. Rickland. Yeah. And uh, so you have to call Mike's office. We usually don't bother Mike, but call somebody to go down and unlock it. The best time is to catch them when, they're, when it's sunny out and the yeah, lunchtime right. right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they'll come down. And it doesn't take long. They're right inside. Anyway, we have over 100, about 130 helmets, 140 helmets now. So you have, we're uh, ready for anything. Do you have more storage space available? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sometimes they pile things up right in front of it. It's definitely <laughs> shared. Da- David, how many did you give? Did you give out last month at the fire department open house? Oh God. Twenty-seven. Twenty-five. Yeah. Thirty. Twenty-five. Thirty. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Okay. It always seems like. We gave out lots more, mm-hmm. but it takes a while. <laughs> All right, no worries. Dave and I were talking at that meeting about when this program started back in um, <coughs> 97, how many helmets that we've probably given out over the years between when the program started and David and then here more recently. And we're probably three to 5,000 helmets. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else, David? Nope. Okay. Joe, anything you'd like to add to the committee? Um, well, I have a question that I think I, uh, that Mike, I hope Mike will be able to answer because there's a new construction at the uh, corner of Lawless and Thorman, a new residential uh, house. And um, they, the construction completed sometime last month, and I just realized at the end of construction they didn't put any sidewalks in or anything. And everywhere I've ever been, they required that. And I'm wondering if that's just not a requirement in Kaiser or... What location it, again? Uh, corner of Lawless and Thorman. It oh. didn't meet the threshold for amount of frontage is all I can tell you. And that would be under the... Go ahead, Hirsch. Well, this is from a planning commission oh. standpoint. That was... That house burned down yes. and it's reconstruction. So it's not new build. Oh, that's right. That's the one that burned down. I, so didn't, I, I guess it's still... Okay, reconstruction, but it is a substantially different structure than what it was. It wasn't like they built it in kind, other than, okay, it's a single-family dwelling, as 
that I just, all the, that's kind of way the code right, uh, is written. However, however, if it, it, you could propose, I don't know exactly how you'd word it, then the lawyers would have to get involved in that. But I know that, uh, I think it was Newport, when, that if you were either remodel, extensive remodeling or re reconstructing on the same site fell into the same as new construction. So they had it worded yeah. so that, that would happen. So that if you if your house burned down and you rebuild it, you might as well you would have to put the sidewalks in. Yeah. yeah <coughs> current codes. So current but they're coded. Current code that would be a, a, a rebuild, a remodel. Okay. Is that is that possible to be reworded so that it would have to go uh, through the planning, planning commission, commission and then through the go through the first through the staff and then come through the planning commission yeah. and then approved by uh, and reviewed and approved or denied by city council. I mean, wouldn't that depend on whether that street, whether the transportation system plan shows an intention to have sidewalk on that street? You could add, I'm just wondering what the process would be. I, I mean, because it's. There's discontinuous sidewalks through the, the that, entire southeast neighborhood. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's just the old part of <coughs> Kaiser and it was old county roads. However, the city council, and I, tell me if I'm wrong, has repeatedly said that addition of sidewalks is desirable throughout the city. Am I correct? And it seems to be the planning commission, excuse me, budget committee or city council meeting. That that was I, just in kind of in general the intent, and there's no plan, no money, but they, yeah, they'd love to have sidewalks everywhere. Uh, the other thing that uh, Joe brought, brought up is, um, and I know that since I had a house and property in Southeast Kaiser, and our back property was on Clark. And the right of ways are so off <laughs> that, yeah, you don't. It, it, there's plenty on one side to do sidewalks, yet on the other side there's not and because of the way the, the property lines and the utilities were put in in the 50s and 60s. So it's not, the center of the street is not really the center of the property or, or the right of way. And, so just for, and just for a piece of information that Mike informed me last month, <coughs> not all streets are streets. <laughs> right? How did you say that, Mike? You said it perfectly, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because the street I live on isn't a city street, although it's paved, sidewalks, and I thought there were storm drains. Apparently, they're mm -hmm. not really storm drains. They're fake storm drains. <laughs> but we're all on city city sewers and water. But it's a... It's a, it's a, a private, driveway. It's a, it's a driveway. It's a, yeah. 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 So there's no sidewalk on one side because it's eight feet from another guy's right. back porch. Mm. So yeah. <laughs> so Mike, you said that the uh, there wasn't enough yeah. frontage. Yeah. What is the minimum? Oh. Yeah. That that was was going to be I don't really question. deal with that, so I'm not sure. That's, yeah. a, neat, that's a neat brown question. Yeah. Public works. Yeah. I mean, uh, planning. Yeah, the planning yeah. 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 That would be something we would have. Yeah. To bring <laughs> I'll ask them next week. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Joe? Okay, good. Um, well, I was going to leave this for Mike, but <laughs> since we started discussing it already, um, I was curious if Kaiser um, requires the use of NACTO in the designs of its streets, or if we are an AASHTO only, who do we, or do we have our own design standards for streets? What is the process, I guess, towards... Well, we, I know we have our standards, but I don't know if they're based off of Ashto or or well, they just came up with and uh, matured over time. Yeah. yeah. Um, the last time I remember, uh, and Bill was here talking, and he used Ashto standards mm -hmm. um, for what we were doing on that particular project, and I think it was the 
roundabout in the, the street up to it, and I think that's what he was w was quoting as standards. But I don't know if that's applied to all the streets or is it, you know, I don't know. I don't know. That would be a question. Well, it it is a good question as we as we uh, get involved with any future grant applications too to know what the, whether the city has adopted AASHTO as is or with any exceptions and what those are. At least on you know on the bicycle and pedestrian elements. Would the committee be able to recommend adoption of NACDO versus whatever we have now? Yeah. So, I'm do you want to put that on the agenda for next month? Mike, is somebody going to look it up? Or? I, can, I, can look it. I can see if there's any resolution that actually says that that takes place and what the okay. You put it on the agenda for next month, please. If everybody's okay with that. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't know. <laughs> I know I, what I prefer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, is there a big distinction between these two different standards? <coughs> I don't know anything about either one of them. But well, I can't give you the exact numbers, but I do know, you know, ASHTO stands for I believe American Association of State Highway, Highway and Transportation, right. yeah. and the other one is North American City Transportation Officials, and the the NACDO views streets as in the city as a, you know, a, a different animal than what ASHTO standards are. So. We might want to also know what Salem d uses too. Mm -hmm. Since we're a partnership with them on a lot of things over time. And the standards would probably include things like sidewalks and... Road width, sidewalks, how... Bike lanes. Bike lanes, yeah. I have a, I think it's an act of bikeways guidebook at home. I could bring it for the next meeting. I mean, the other one too, if, if we're like in the cases where we're pursuing state or federal dollars through the state, through ODOT, then those will often ask for the mm -hmm. Oregon Bicycle and Pedestrian Design Guidelines, which is going to be similar to both of the ones that are mentioned, but may be more rigorous in certain areas for the state and federal funding. Mm -hmm. uh, when we applied for the uh, bike community, I, didn't they ask? I think, they, I think, and, and I the think staff, that was one of the questions. And I yeah. can't remember the answer. The staff did that one. So, okay. okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I think. Okay, good question, Joe. Uh, that's two good ones. You got another one? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> He's planning our, our next month agenda for us. Great. Uh, Hurst, do you have anything that you'd um, like? McNary High School bike rack. I have not given that up. I met with um, Eric Jesperson, the principal, and... Uh, it was a beautiful day. I took a picture. There were 40 bikes in the rack. <laughs> Eric was quite excited about doing it. And so um, since the bond measure has passed and they're going to be starting uh, some construction probably after the end of the school year, um, we'll probably get something in. Uh, he was going to be checking with the um, project manager for that and he's going to get back to me. We've already tentatively worked with the SeaTac Center oh, because they bu built four of them for that the Salem Bike Club helped pay for at um, Saturday Market downtown. They installed those right across from the employment. And the ones at South Salem High School? And they built the ones at South Salem High School. So Eric was very, and he also has two teachers there that are, are excited and willing to help. And uh, so it's not going to happen this school year, but um, there's a small committee working now at the school, which I'm part of. Oh, and we've come, come up with about $1,200 already for it. So, And we figured 10 to 20 of those bike racks at 85 bucks each. 
and they would be installed probably in the same area as the old one. About, about $85, that's how much the SeaTac Center charged for the ones that were installed in August at the um, Saturday market area. Those are the single? They're the single, they're good ones. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing Eric uh, mentioned that I completely agree, we want McNary blue ones. <laughs> <laughs> so that project is still um, going on. It'll take a little longer, but um, the powers in the Salem Kaiser are for it. And Eric was really excited, especially if he can use some private donations to get it done. Mm -hmm. And he's already, we already got $1,200. Have they discussed if all or part of that area would be covered eventually? Not initially, because that's another funding, mm -hmm. but the area could be covered where the bikes are now. The racks, the racks that they're there are the same ones that were there in 1972 when I made, <laughs> went to McNary. And the racks were full on that day. Now, granted it was a beautiful day, but um, the bikes were full. And two of the teachers said they would use the racks if they were decent racks, but now they take them upstairs mm -hmm. to their classrooms. So, um, real positive that nobody has said no. It's just a matter of time. We better hurry up because a few more years, Shippo will be involved and say we can't move them. <laughs> 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 well, hope the area is going to be the same area where the bike rack is now. So Antiquities Act. Uh, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, about, you know, I know. Well, I have office. a. I made a suggestion, and maybe I could bring a piece of it home for my memory. Uh, but Marianne said something about no. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, just finished a project at Boys and Girls Club repairing all the bikes that uh, from the BTA that were given to the Boys and Girls Club about 10, 15 years ago. We did a repair project and cleaning them up. So those bikes are the ones that we have used for bike skills fairs and that the city of Kaiser has access to for bike events. So, Do you recall how many? <laughs> 25. Cool. And we did it on two Thursdays from 11 to 1. The yeah, fact is, I still haven't gotten the grease off my hands <laughs> from working <laughs> on them. But they, have you know. right, they have helmets also? Yeah. And safety vests? Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's it for me. Thank you, Hirsch. Uh, Pat, do you have anything for the committee? Uh, I don't have uh, activity to report, but I uh, was kind of going through things that I've kept since being on this committee for three and a half years or something. And there's a number of things that uh, we kind of have in progress. And, and I was, so I was wondering if at some point, maybe ne next month or January, we'd want to do like we did uh, a while back and just make a list of all the different um, uh, efforts that we want to address in in the coming year and assign and kind of get people's names attached to each one to pursue. The, the things that I have on here uh, was bike friend, friendly community. That would be one whether we're going to pursue a re renewing, renewing that for next year. Uh, bike friendly businesses, uh, if, if we want to make any efforts in that. Um, the biking and walking route maps. I think Hirsch, you kind of have been involved, and and others of us are overdue in submitting some mm. route ideas mm. to you. Um, the wayfinding signs along the Willamette Valley Scenic Bikeway. I think that was David. I think you started um, something on that. I've got uh, yep. pictures and some some suggestions, and the and the Where, corner that yeah. you mentioned, especially like corner of. Um, uh, Chamawa Road at Windsor Island Road, having some kind of or wayfinding orientation there. I see where there's a, or the, when, not Windsor, what's it turned into? Mambrin and then Shoreline. Shoreline and Mambrin, yeah. that, wherever yeah. you have a change of direction. Right, where, so he, so you identified several, several places, <coughs> and so that would be another project that we okay. could either fine tune what we want and where we want it, and then, and then try to 
figure out where the where the money can come from. Um, another is safe routes to school action plans for for uh, I guess for Cummings and Kennedy School especially, but any of the Title I schools perhaps. Um, another one that that I had was the um, working with uh, Lauren Sanitation on the policy. Uh, maybe publicizing or greater awareness about people putting their their garbage cans in, uh, in the middle of the sidewalk or the middle of the bike lanes and how to get a better maybe a public information out about that what's the what's an appropriate place to put your garbage cans in, in different situations depending if you have sidewalk or bike lanes right. or so none I'll, of the above right and so one of the one of the issues I think we're going to run into is is um, the arms uh, on the on the trucks aren't long enough. If there's any room between the sidewalk and the street, there's a swale or if there's anything there. So you have to put them on in the street mm -hmm. because the arms can't fit. So that's where we run into some problems. And so I think that's why everybody just puts them in the street, I think. And I mean, that doesn't affect every neighborhood, but. Yeah, yeah so I think Hirsch, Hirsch and I were kind of on tap to just go and visit them and kind of look at the different scenarios where people could put it in the parking area of a street, not in a travel lane, or where they could put it. You know, just my initial concern was maybe to, was to keep them out of the sidewalk, because I don't like to walk down the sidewalk and have to move all the cans, you know, as we go along. And if somebody was in a wheelchair, they would not be able to negotiate those sidewalks. Um, and the last thing I had was safe routes to school student tallies. That also, I guess, would be part of what I already mentioned, um, act, safe routes action plans at, at a couple of the schools. And that would be, so that would pose that question whether this committee wants to get actively involved in a couple of those where we have uh, receptive staff at the school. So anyway, that's mm -hmm. my, okay. my thought. I have one, he jogged my memory. Um, <laughs> There's, uh, with Safe Routes to School, they have uh, certain days of the year where they have Walk to School Day, and we missed it this year. It was like tomorrow, probably. <laughs> and so we didn't do anything to organize some, nope. some event for that. But like in May, I think they have another one where we could do a uh, Safe Routes to School Walk to School Day. And well, that's bike month. Or bike month. Yeah, yeah that's... So doing like walking school bus or bike school bus. Yeah, to, it, so I would like maybe we could plan something like that. Yeah. Well, we uh, can't plan it. Or help. Yes, help with the schools. Can help the, only the, school. School, the only school that's willing, Dave and I have tried to work, the only school that's willing to do that is Forest Ridge. And they've never really... We've volunteered to help them and everything. It was volunteered all of them. <laughs> yeah, all of them, but definitely. I mean, Cummings looks good for next year. So. Yeah, they do. And Kaiser Elementary right. was supportive in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but Cummings, we, I Cummings was going to say one. In general, there would be some advantages for some of us or us or to try and get a little closer to the schools. And especially in terms of bicycling and walking, is that that's a huge audience. And if you captive audience, if you can get a chance to talk to the PTA or the uh, somebody's classroom, or mm -hmm. if somebody was interested in, in well, group we bicycle training, we haven't made a concerted effort well, all across Kaiser to do that. We have um, a good. Um, start at Cummings now. Yes. And the principal's very excited. She was even, I, when we were doing the walkthrough, dropped the idea of a, a bike skills fair there. And she was very excited about that. And that parent that's on the PTA that did the Kennedy walk, she also is now a new parent at Cummings. So we have an in. Amber. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on the same lines. With the, how many neighborhood associations do we have now? <coughs> Three. To, to make ourselves available to present. You wanted <laughs> one. <laughs> you guys present want information. <laughs> we got, it doesn't have, we're not talking, you know, we're talking maybe 15 minutes. Pick up some highlights that people want to know about 
So that would could be a bicycle. That, could be that a would be something we could do, yeah, but we have to make an effort to outreach to the yeah. neighborhood associations. Uh, I've done, make it. of course, the southeast mm -hmm. and uh, um, west, but it's a subject that can be reoccurring. Yeah, and we don't want to take, don't go in and, and did, one hour this, presentation and put everybody <laughs> to sleep. I, mean, I could do that. The school liaison want to do one. There was someone there that I thought there were was the liaison, but apparently wasn't. <laughs> she was very interested, and then she never showed up again, so well, we we're lost the contact. Yeah, no. they chased them down. No, yeah. we're still, we got all the equipment <laughs> yes. and everything ready to go. We got some helmets. And we have the knowledge to do at least something. Yeah. Well, in those neighborhood associations, if we can get them on board, they could then be kind of a go-between with the schools who. That's the, with, with yeah. because uh, uh, Southeast for sure has a member that is the school liaison person. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to get going. Rath Rachel, yeah. To reach out to more people in the community. Yeah. Uh, I have one other. Oh, other well, I, I remembered. I had one other question. That's for Public Works for Mike. On um, Plymouth, uh, between River Road and, and Cherry, they've been doing some utility, I guess, work in there, and it's been patched, patched and paved, but the bike lane isn't striped back yet. So I'm concerned that the bike lane gets striped wide enough. I think they had a temporary one in there that was. It wasn't. It wasn't five feet wide. It wasn't. It was like substandard width, and so I want to make sure that there's ample room with the bike lane in there. Yeah, the contractor's on board to get that restriped. I know right there at River Road, it's a hair smaller, and then it comes out, and that's just because of, I think the the width that we had there. It's five feet on the on the north side, and it is a little bit smaller on the south side, but it kicks out pretty quickly to five feet. So I'm not sure where you were talking about where it was super small, but um, it should be put back the way it should. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Michael. Uh, so maybe all of you have seen this already, but I got an email from Safe Routes to School. They're having a webinar on uh, walk audits on the 15th, and also that the Safe Routes to Parks program, sorry about that, uh, is having uh, applications opening uh, by December 10th. That was safe routes to parks. Yes. Yeah, it's a grant application. Who's whose funding is that? Uh, well, it says JPB Foundation. Hmm. Don't know who that is. So it's private. Yeah. yeah. Nike. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? And what was the deadline? Do you have that right? December tenth, midnight. Uh, but it says. Um, Grants of twelve thousand five hundred dollars each, and grantee communities will receive training, individualized consult consultation, technical assistance, connection with peer communities, and in-person workshop, and, and the grants. This looks like it's a planning grant. Too. Um, when we were working on Kennedy. Uh, safe routes to school grant application. Uh, there are some parks in that area and uh, that weren't really included as part of the safe routes to school at grant application. But as this, they might be eligible for this other program. So that would be something we'd have to ask the city again, right? Yeah. Um, or to develop an idea and then see if the city wants to approve it. And then, like, do you know if the grant requires a, a match or anything? Or uh, I would have to look at it through. I haven't opened up the PDF. Um, okay. But, but I can look that up and get, send an email out to everyone. Thank you. Did you want to? Yeah, so that's. Well, one is I see it as a, a, a grant that the uh, Parks Commission should be directly involved in versus us. We can partner with them, but yeah, but but it, it's a it's an indicator to them that for next year I maybe mean, can get on board because all this is brand new for yeah. the safe routes. But I, I would think the park 
commission should be, you know, involved. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So we are going to have more meetings. Well, I mean, I, it seems to me it's more of a safe route to the park. It's a tr it seems like it's a walking and biking issue. But the question would be what city council meetings would we even have between now and then to seek approval to apply? <laughs> well, I think Kirsch, you, you were saying it should be a 2019 thing we should be yeah. doing, not 2018. But I could see us both, you know, maybe us going to, one of us going to the Parks Commission, mm -hmm. seeing if they would be on board and then having a joint I, I uh, agree. recommendation to the council. I agree that that's where we, you know, I, I wouldn't want to leave them out because mm -hmm. Uh, the routes themselves may even be inside the park, and <laughs> um, they have master plans on a lot of the the parks already. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of the parks that are their jurisdiction. And matching funds, we might be able to use uh, as the city who used the parks foundation monies and all sorts of stuff. But right. parks has to be involved. Mm -hmm. But I. I between now and the 10th, I just don't think we could get it. It's, yeah, yeah. I, it's the first I've seen this, and it's an awfully fast turnaround. Well, yeah, I little. just saw it okay. this week, too. So yeah. well, we could start planning for next year. Yeah. yeah. Or things we want to accomplish. Okay. Anything else, Michael? No. Okay. Well, good run on your councilman position. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, last month, we... Uh, Pat and I and many of the else, others contributed to um, the grant applications for Safe Routes to School. The applications were submitted. Uh, we haven't heard back yet. We don't know if we've been approved yet. Uh, thank you all very much for your help. All of a sudden, I don't have much to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <So> <laughs> we'll fix that. And... Um, I was also uh, president of the Salem Kiwanis Club. I'm no longer president. Uh, someone else took that job, so I really don't have anything to do right now. <laughs> but so, so I've been out checking out the roads. Last week I rode 198 miles. Good. <laughs> uh, that's all I have. Um, uh, Mike, can we have a staff report, please? Our guys are continuing out and about um, cleaning catch basins and running the storm lines, hitting trouble spots around town before the rains get here. I'm happy the rains aren't here yet, but I know we need the rain. Um, and one note, leaves are falling, and um, it's not okay to blow the leaves in the street. If that happens, Lauren's sanitation will just drive right around them. So um, do our part. If we see people doing that, just kind of, you can, you can call it in, you can call it to me but uh, that's, that's not okay because it ends up plugging our catch basins. So we can all do our part by keeping our catch basins clean if you have one in front of your house. So I did notice in a certain neighborhood, uh, McNary Estates, that they were blowing their leaves into the street. I don't know if they have. Well, that's their own storm line, so I guess they can. It's private, they it's private roads. Okay, so may, maybe, that, maybe that's, how, that's how they do it. So. They're not actually city streets. Got those streets that aren't really streets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they should still, you know, keep keep them out of the keep them out of the catch basins. But they can, they have their own rules. So, yeah, that's all I have. Okay. So in general, people are not supposed to put their leaves in the street. Correct. Okay. Um, we don't have a police uh, liaison uh, representative tonight. Uh, let's have our council liaison. Okay, Arlene. but I will say one thing for the police: all of their traffic cops will be on the road Monday so all the new hires everybody they're every they're all gonna be on the road Monday so just drive stop. safe on That's Monday it. drive safe on Monday and stop um, for school buses okay so what I have is uh, mr. Anderson I think you're all familiar with mr. Anderson from Newburgh Avenue came to the City Council meeting on Monday there's a house on the southeast corner um, of MacArthur and Newburgh there that has been vacant they've had issues with squatters and they've got rid of that and it was a bank owned one so the bank did come in they cleaned it up really well they did everything and then eight students from mcnary and i know they've been on video so i don't know if they've caught them decided to to kick the garage door in uh, graffiti the fence 
Um, there's been a lot of vandalism now going on. And so I understand why they want to lock the gate. We would like them to lock the gate, but that is not something in our jurisdiction that we cannot control. So I think when this vandalism starts, if they can't get it in check, then I think McNary students need to walk around and, and go into the two entrances. That's the reason why they closed the other two was the same thing. But we're trying to work with them still. I know that Chris is talking to him and Chief Teague and you know Jesper, Jeff, Jesperson and all that and trying to work this thing out. But you know I understand his frustration, so we just can't do anything. Our police can do something, obviously, with the graffitiists and the squatters, but that's about it on that one. Okay, so then um, the airport, we sent a letter of support uh, for the, they wanna bring air, um, air uh, flights back to Salem. So signed a letter of support for that. No monetary money will be given. It's just a letter of support for the area so they can go get grant money. And then the third thing I have is, uh, it's a school district kind of thing versus the church kind of thing, but I know you all heard about the imminent domain saying, so hopefully that will end uh, on a good note um, soon, sooner than later, but because that's what McNary needs to start their construction in 2019. So we'll see what happens. That, and unless you guys have any questions, that's all I have. I have a question. Sir. Just, uh, just a guess on your part. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming, when do they start actually putting the budget together for next year? Okay, so I think it January goes to all, I, no, I think it's already gone to to the department heads, and so then they have until a certain time, I'm, I'm thinking March, March. <laughs> they have until March, but March. it does take them a couple months to try to put everything together for their particular unit but they have to have it all turned back to Tim before March, I think, around that time. And then he has to put it all together, and then yeah. it comes out, I want to say, end of April, right before budget. Yeah. So. Well, actually, uh, before Am I wrong? January, in January, you have your long-range planning task force for uh, the budget, and the, so there's some of it's already in place. Yeah, some that. of the long-range is already in there, so probably more like the goals, but we're, we're doing some goals uh, work session in December, so all that, all of our things will be doing, in, we're doing a work session in December for that, and so all that will be sent, um, will be given to staff, and then whatever they do, they do, so. The, the reason for bringing that up at this committee would be, if, for, I have no plans, but if for some reason there was something that we thought should be done that was going to cost money, we've got to get in there. We should ask, or soon. Mm -hmm. Soon. <laughs> you should know. Like, well, if you guys do a planning thing, if you're going to do a planning thing in January like you were just talking about, you maybe then you can figure out is what it is that you're going to need throughout the year and then, and then um, you know, come to council and say, look, we'd like to do this. Would this be okay? If we say yes, then give it to staff and we stick it in there. Yep. Okay. Or they'll discuss it anyway. Exactly. We'll discuss always. Okay. Anybody have anything else for the uh, good of the order? Uh, we are adjourned at uh, 748, 648. <laughs> Good job.